Hi everyone and welcome to the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now, episode number 19. Today we're going to talk about reports, uh, drill downs, data sets and how we can actually filter on conditions on the related list on the records. Uh, sorry for being a few weeks out of the air, been uh, switching jobs from being a consultant to actually work at service now so I had to kind of focus on that one but now I'm back and hopefully we'll start a little bit more often about the videos. So who am I? Hopefully most of you guys know me by now. My name is Goran Lundqvist aka The Witch Doctor. Uh, wrote down a, a couple of stuff I have been doing, been working with service now since around 2014. Been a customer, been working as a partner and now I'm actually working on service now developing ServiceNow for them themselves, so they can use it as good as we want it to be. Uh, also loves the community, of course, playing around out, trying to answer the questions. Uh, being three times MVP, sadly that's probably the last time since employees isn't allowed to be MVPs anymore. Uh, but, doesn't matter, I'll still be on the community trying to help out. So, want to reach me if you isn't connected, feel free to hit me on LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah, you got the, the contact details on the bottom left, I guess. Also, wrote a book about the, the ServiceNow stuff that I actually had in my head, trying to get that out to you guys as well. Uh, called The Wish Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow. You can find it on Amazon, both as an ebook and a paperback. Just search for ServiceNow if you haven't heard about it. Read the review, see if there's something for you. Just ask me if you have any questions. Got a couple of bullet points here where you can see what you will find in the book. But enough about that, let's look at the agenda. So three things we're gonna talk about. Drill downs, report with data sets, just to show you what it is and how you can use it. And last thing is how we can filter incidents or records, tasks, whatever that exists in ServiceNow on related list conditions. So let's skip the PowerPoint. Let's go into our instance. And just to show you how I have done to make this work so you don't will go into your own instance and suddenly you will, won't get the same thing that I actually get. So what I did was was that I to the SLA definitions. And you, if you have some background noise, that's my son and his friends going all in on the Xbox. So hopefully they will keep quiet for a while. They are downstairs at least, so let's hope for that one. So I have deactivated this SLA, so at the moment I don't have any SLAs on the priority five incidents. So I have gone to the incident list, just created this incident. Just you can see how I can actually do a report showing only the incident that doesn't, for example, have, have an SLA. As you can see, this one don't have any SLAs. So, Let's go to reports. Uh, let's create a new report. And yes, just call it incidents without. Uh, yes. And of course, you can make much, much more complex stuff that mine, since my data isn't that huge, so I have to go with the few records I have. So I'm basically just going to create a, a list report. Here is all my incident, we're going for all. Now, when you hit the filter, you can see that down here, you have something called related list conditions. And I've always been wondering what you can use this for. And quite frankly, I stumbled into it. And for me, I think I can actually use this in some cases to even not having to create data views, for example. Or database views, which I perhaps did in the, in the start. So basically, you hit this one to get a selection, which table is you want to look at. In this case, we want to have the task SLA one. By default, it says greater than or equal to one, meaning that show all incidents where we at least find one related task SLA record to the incident. So if I hit run, you can see that it starts on 27. Dot list. And you can see that this one is missing between this one and this one. And just to show you 
that I'm not fooling around. You can, of course, change this condition as well. You get a few of these. <coughs> so, for example, in my case, I would like to see all incident that doesn't have any record in the task SLA table. I'll just select none, hit run, and you can see here's mine, and we got a couple of more. Let me just click on this one. And you can see if I scroll down, it doesn't have anything. I can, of course, build conditions on the task SLA in this case as well, saying that I only want to see, I would like to have at least one or more hits. And I only want to see incident that actually have a breached uh, SLA. So I go to the has breached, has breached is true and hit run. Now, of course, you can see mine doesn't pop up because I don't have it, but these ones all have at least one breached SLA. So this is something you can do with the rate list. And of course, you get a, have a lot of rate lists since we're talking about the task table. So you can pretty much do some really cool stuff. Um, and as you can see, hmm. I actually thought that was a, you can only have one related list, but I guess it's getting too uh, complex to run in the database if you have multiple. But at least you can look at one related list and see do we have a match. Uh, I would ask any questions, but I guess that's the silence says you don't have anything. So let's, uh, let's go to the next thing. Um, we're talking about data sets. Yeah, and this was something that came, I actually think it came with uh, Jakarta or Kingston, somewhere around that time, before datasets was something with performance analytics. Now you can actually use them without performance analytics. And what can you do with datasets? Dataset basically means that you can have multiple data sources in one report. You can compare, in my example, when <clears throat> I want to have a timeline where I can see when changes were complete compared to when incident was created. So hopefully we don't want to see that when the dates where incidents are being or changes are being closed, the incidents are being created spikes because that means that our changes are not doing well when they are being implemented. So how do we do that? Let's go back to data. I'll just, since I haven't saved this one, I'll just call it incident data set for fun. We'll keep the incident table. We are going to use uh, a line instead. I'll trend by, so this is incident. So, hmm, let's do it the other way around. Let's go by change first. And I'm going to show you soon why. I'll hit the change request instead. Uh, one good thing that actually I saw Shock mention in one of his YouTubes, which is real nice. If I start typing change, I get all different tables that even have change in the label. But if I start with a bracket change, then actually I only get the list with the tables that starts the table name with bracket change. And as you can see, a lot less choices. So that's a really good way to quickly find your table. Like I said, you always learn something new every day about ServiceNow. So I hit next, still align. And of course, since these are the changes, we want to trend by closed. Uh, let's hit per month. And let's run. And as you can see, the data isn't that fun. We have 167, which is empty. Uh, we might perhaps want to filter those one out since they're not interesting. So let's, let's do that for fun. I just hit active is false since we only want to look at the ones that are closed. And now you can see nine on July, 2015, two in September, not that much data, but at least you, you get it. So now we have created this one. I need to hit save to find the data set functionality. 
So I'll click save. Now, let's close the filter. And now, if you haven't seen it earlier, this icon wasn't there. So now I can click on this one. And here you can see this is the data set I just created. I can create a drill down, which I will come to soon, or I can add a data set. So now I would like to have incidents as another data set. So I just click on this one, call it one incident, and we call it open incidents. We'll hit the incident table. I hit next, you can see that is, I can only choose these since the first one has decided what kind of uh, reports I'm already going to create. So let's select line. You can see that I can select a few things. So in this case, I want the created date instead of closed since when the changes are closed, the incidents are open. I can't change the per since it needs to be in the same range as the other one. So month, and then I'll just hit run. You can see this is the report. I'll hit save, and ta-da, you can see that I have actually now two reports in one report. Giving a little bit of overview, better overview to see what things happen. This case, heck, we closed 31 changes in July or June, and no incidents. So that's a really good change process, I guess. Now about the real drill downs. With drill downs, when you click on one point, and did I make that new mistake now? Oh, I hope not. I saved right. Yeah, perfect. Remember, if you just click run the whole time, the report isn't saved. And when you accidentally click a drill down, the report is gone. If you haven't saved, you have to start from the beginning. Everybody done that. So, but with drill downs, you can actually decide which report is going to show when I click on one of these points. And as you saw, when I click on this one, I get to a list that is the default drill down. But if I click here, I can actually add a drill down, meaning that I want, when I click on a change, I would like to get a pie chart over which categories it is, for example. So let's do that. Let's go here. We click on add drill down. We say category, finish category. You can see that the table is, of course, that table. This means that now, this report I'm choosing now is going to be built on the data on that specific point where I click. So I'll click on uh, donut or pie. Let's do a pie. And group by category. And I'll just stick like that. Hit save. Now you can see that I have a nice drill down. And as you can see, since this is a new report, I can of course add another drill down and another drill down. So you can clip drilling down into this report. And this functionality you can also use on normal reports. You don't have to have these kind of data sets to do multiple data sets to use it. So how does it use? That's how hit. I just click saves too many times. When I click on this one, I think I found a bug. Huh. See, it doesn't really. That's kind of weird. Or am I looking at. Sorry. Green one is incense. Blue one is change. That was because I did a, a safe dry run earlier and then the colors were all the way around. Let's look at changes. Oh. Nine in others. That's a, a good example, Goran. Let's um, let's go back to the report. Uh, let's see if I can find. Please be different. Yay! Software and telecom two. Here's the pie chart. And going back to my change process, 
saying that it was yay it's 31 changes i would rather say that we have probably something else that's wicked because we have 31 incidents instead with no created changes so perhaps we're doing changes without creating records so sadly my company this acme company probably needs to review the processes but drill downs is a pretty good way since you perhaps not always want to get to one list view the whole time you can just make fun and just keep drilling down let's see if we can get three colors we couldn't never have a other category everyone would use it even in the demo data you can see that so i think that was actually it for this video um yep feel free if you haven't done it subscribe throw comments say what you want me to to play around with and i'll try to see if i get time to to do it in a video i don't know everything but i'll try to find out if i don't know it i even been more intrigued to to try to find it so have a good Saturday night and see you around.